Hello, everyone, and welcome to Hit and Hustle from irishsportsdaily.com. I am your host, Greg Flamong, and with me, as always, is the professor of Jamie University, Mr. Jamie Uyama, coming in on the IR today. Uh, we've, we've sustained, we are hitting and hustling today. We, we have an injury in our midst. Uh, we're, we're, we're fighting it. We're, we're playing hurt, um, and that's what we do on this channel. Uh, Jamie will explain that in a second. So it cost him. It cost him an appearance on Power Hour, and so uh, he'll tell uh, everybody what happened, what's going on with him. Uh, but we've got another spring practice uh, in the books. Uh, Notre Dame's second spring practice as they come off of spring break. Uh, the players return, so there. Uh, I think one more practice is going to be just in shells, and then they'll put on the pads and um, get some real stuff going on. So uh, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about everything that we learned today. So thank you everyone for tuning in. If this is your first time catching our show, please uh, subscribe to this channel. Please hit the like button. Please hit the notification bell. So you know, whenever it is, we are going live links to the show are going to be in the description below. And there's a couple things as the items that you might've noticed. Uh, we have new intro music, uh, <laughs> Matt's Matt's trolling Jamie in in the chat right now. We've got some new intro music. YouTube's jamming us up. They're 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 claiming copyright on videos that are on music that is clearly noted as not copyright, but they're but they're jamming us there. So we've got some new intro music. Uh, so so uh, just hope you enjoyed that. Uh, had to make some changes, uh, kind of on the fly here. Uh, but they're 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 not they're not not great customer service too. I'm trying, I'm trying to get a hold of them to try to figure out what the deal is and they're not, they're not helping us out at all. So they're jamming us there. Um, and customer service is important, uh, with, with anything that you're doing. And that's why if you're looking for a new clothing, new, uh, new suit, new tuxedo, new bomber jacket, whatever it might be, then you want to go to a place where the customer service is exemplary. And that is esqclothing.com, which is founded by Notre Dame alum, Ga Wang. And you've seen ESQ and all your favorite Notre Dame players and coaches. He's got over a decade of making the best custom clothing available. Uh, they'll, sit you, they'll suit you up perfect. They'll do it just custom to your specs and how you want it to be. And uh, it'll help you look and feel your best in 2024. Perfect fitting suit or sport coat, shirt or bomber jacket. The perfect tuxedo for wedding season. Check out Gaz's amazing work at esqclothing.com. Book an appointment to upgrade your wardrobe today. Mention ISD and get 10% off your entire purchase. Uh, Matt jamming, jamming us like Jamie's shoulder. It's tough. Um, uh, how... Matt says, came to check on Jamie, and he's fine. What a shock! It's tough. It's tough out there. Uh, Jamie, what happened, man? How, how did how did this how did this come about? Uh, yeah, you know, you know, Matt. I'm just wearing this sling just for fun. Uh, yeah, so uh, I was, you know, like a good Canadian boy. I was playing hockey on Sunday night. Uh, I, I play. Uh, you know, with, with some friends, we play in a, uh, in a men's league team. And, uh, I just like literally first shift of the game on Sunday, I sh shot the puck in. I, 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 I play defense on the team. I'm usually kind of like taking it easy. I'm not, I'm not doing it. I know Matt just came in here just to troll for the beginning. Um, but, uh, I just, you know, took a, took a shot on net, you know, when, and then the rebound was there. I went and just, you know, skated in. I put in the rebound. I, I scored. The goalie, I just, I don't know what the hell he was doing. He, he was, like, diving for the puck that was already, like, in the net and basically submarined me. And then I went, like, flat out and went full body weight on my shoulder. And uh, my shoulder uh, dislocated my shoulder. Dislocated the shoulder. That's terrible. I mean, that's that's a very painful injury. No one wants that. Uh, we, we, I mean, in the chat, we thought you were going to go in for surgery. Um, that's what they were uh, telling me. I was lucky that. Uh, so my my friend's wife is a, a a nurse in the OR at the hospital that uh, that uh, I was at. So luckily, she the the ER doctor was like, "Yeah, it's like a grade five. And I was like, "Grade five? I'm like, that does not sound good. And they're like, yeah, like, I think, you know, and they were like prepping me, going to put an IV in me and getting and prepping me to go in for surgery. Um, and anyways, they just like, uh, and then luckily they sent down uh, 
some OR doctors to take a look and they were like, oh no, this is like grade three. Like it's, you know, it's going to suck, but it's like, you're, you're not going to need surgery or hopefully not. And then I just have to go back in a few weeks and get an x-ray again and whatever. But yeah. uh, so just, you know, the you know, the pain's gotten better every day. Uh, so that's good. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, doing a lot of stuff, one arm, I got to figure out how to do uh, uh, I got to figure out how to, uh, type out all of uh, six thoughts today right after this and then uh yeah just figured out how we go yeah yeah i mean we're, we're, we're on we're on meds we're on painkillers you know we're fighting it your lovely wife is is taping you up she's she's taking care of you over there you're luckily like you mentioned married to a sports physio so uh look man get better you know we, we want you back we want you uh at full strength uh we need you for the for the spring we need you for spring James. i should be healthy I'll, i mean i'll be out there in uh april for the back half of uh spring yeah ball, so yeah yeah all right uh speaking of being out there um uh, notre dame football is out there and uh gabe rubio was was on campus uh attending i think i think that's a pretty good sign that they they expect him to come back and that they are going to welcome him back you don't just allow people to show up to practice you know what i mean like if he's if he's going to be um you know doing that and he's going to be around the team i think that that's a good sign that he intends to come back notre dame will welcome him back should wh whatever needs to be done to uh kind of get back into the team uh i think that's that's a good sign that that's that's going to happen uh joe alt uh blake fisher were also there sam hartman was on was on campus taking in the taking in the festivities. You got, you got a pretty big recruiting weekend coming up for Notre Dame as well. Uh, Matt put that out on the, on the Irish sports daily message board. So you're going to want to check that out. A lot of, a lot of big time recruits are coming in. Um, Derek Meadows being one of them. I think Notre Dame really needs him at wide receiver and uh, th they're definitely targeting him. They've been on him a lot longer than a lot of people. So that's something to monitor th throughout the weekend. Uh, I think, I think Deuce Knight's going to be on campus as well. Th did I see that Jamie? Did yeah. I yeah, Deuce Knight's going to be on campus. So with him and Derek Meadows, I think that's a pretty good sign uh, on on both those fronts. Frankly, on the on the Deuce Knight and the Derek Meadows side of things. Um, let's actually, you know what? Let's talk about speaking of recruiting. Let's talk about Jerome Bettis Jr. for a second, Jamie. Uh, he committed to Notre Dame. I think a lot of people were kind of waiting for this to happen. It seemed like uh, it could have been done months ago, but he he committed on this on the pot of gold day that Notre Dame does. Uh, they did on St. Patrick's Day again. And so he uh, he committed on the same day that he got his original offer. He was offered on Pot of Gold Day. He committed uh, a year later to the day. Uh, you did a film, Don't Lie on Him, Jamie. Talk to us a little bit about Jerome Bettis Jr. You didn't get to talk to him on Power Hour uh, because you had to skip that. So um, what is your what is your take on him? What are you looking on him? And then I've got some thoughts on Jerome Bettis Jr. as well. Well, I think you like the size. He's he's a big kid, right? Like he's he's yeah. like a legit six two. Um, you know, he's he's legit like you know, 190, 195. Um, he's got good hands. He's a he's a guy who uh is a is a fit on the boundary, someone who uh can win contested catches. Uh you know, uh, high points the football well, uh does a nice job on back shoulder stuff. Um you know, is that's where you see most of his work done work done. And it's something that's like, I, I think like, um, you know, it, that's going to be key for him because I don't think he's someone that kind of shows the other traits to be like a dynamic guy, like after the catch or to be like, just like a dynamic route runner. Like, I don't think like, I don't see like, uh, you know, like elite short area quickness. He didn't run like a great 40 at the Atlanta, um, you know, UC report camp. So mm -hmm. he's someone that I think is, he's got to physically develop. Um, he needs to, uh, you know, like, like Jason Smith mentioned, I mentioned in my film of life, he needs to become a bully. Like that's what yeah. ha has to happen for him. I think that's going to be key for him. Um, and I think when you look at kind of like, can he be good enough to be a contributor? Yeah, for sure he can. Right. But like, I look at him right now and if he was like a guy who was headlining the class, he'd be like, you'd probably feel certainly different, but he's additive in the class and a guy uh -huh. who can, 
uh, and a guy who could, you know, has a chance to help out. The other thing is that I, I mean, I don't see him as, you know, some people have said, cause he plays safety too. Right. And he's like, not a bad high school safety or whatever, but like, he's just, I don't think he's athletic enough to play safety at um, the next level. So I think, you know, he's gotta be a boundary receiver. And I think if you're going to take a chance on a guy like that too, um, you'd want to do it with a guy who has got the pedigree uh, 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 that he has, right? Like, because that's what you're kind of hoping for too, that he's able to kind of like take that kind of jump that, you know, that uh, a, lo a lot of guys do. And it, it's, you know, Notre Dame's had a lot of success with guys who are like, mm -hmm. with, uh, you know, former uh, pro uh, pro players and former legacy guys recently too, right? So, and I think, I, I mean, I wouldn't put him, because if I look at, say, like him compared to, say, Bryce Young, where Bryce Young, when he was offered, it was also one of those, like, I don't know, like a lot of people questioned it. But Bryce Young, I thought, took more of a jump in his junior year to kind of like, uh, you know, make it look like, oh, this guy could be really something special. And you haven't seen that from uh, Bettis Jr. yet. So you want to see that from him uh, as a senior. Yeah, uh, Ray John and Jason Smith are asking if he's uh, similar to a ceiling like Jaden Thomas. Um, I personally don't see that. Like, I, I was just, I was, I was very, um, I was very high on on Jaden Thomas coming out of high school. I, I thought he would be like David Givens, uh, some someone similar to that, uh, Jaden Thomas. And I that, and, and frankly, I I think that's kind of aged well. Actually, I think they're they're kind of similar players in terms of their versatility and uh, their blocking and size and things of that nature. Um, I, I don't really see that from Jerome Bettis Jr. Uh, you know, EK is talking about the next Watts moving to defense. You know, maybe, I don't know. I, here's the thing. I don't think he's a good enough athlete. He's just not. Right. I, I, yeah. Watts was, a, Watts was a better athlete in high school. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. People ask the question, and we've been asked this since he's been recruited, like, would Notre Dame be offering him if he wasn't Jerome Bettis' son? It's unknowable because he is his son and he's, there's no other way to, you know, yeah. he is like, I have no idea. But the point is, is that it's just because you said if he was a headliner of the class, that would not be a great thing, but he's not a headliner of the class. And, and to me in this era where you can, you can supplement your roster through the portal, right? You can supplement your roster. It's not like it, it's, it's, Taking high school players now is a little is way different, I think, than it was like four years ago or five years ago, right? You can just change change the roster a little bit if you need to. If you miss somewhere, you can just add someone, right? Like they did with Bo Collins and they did with Jane Harrison and they did with Chris Mitchell, right? Like you can do those things. That being said, take Jerome Bettis' son. Take his son if he's even close to being uh a, a good college player or a, a, a viable college player, take him. Well, I don't like to me, lean into that. Like, Oh, uh, he's a legacy. Yeah. You take Jerome Bettis, his son, Jerome Bettis is a huge part of the Notre Dame program. He is around the program all the time. Like, it, it, Jason Smith said, it'd be terrible if he went somewhere else and was a good player. Yes. You take him. I'm fine with it. Like, just like they took uh, Erlacher son, just like they just took, uh, Jordan Faison's brother, <laughs> who's like, who's so, he's, he's a good athlete, right? Great, great athlete. He's so small. He's so small and that's fine. I was small. I'm a small, I was a small guy. Maybe he could get bigger. I, I'm just saying like, I, I don't think anyone really cares about them taking uh young phase on. Right. And so I don't think anyone should care about Notre Dame taking young Bettis. It, it to me, you take him right you take all your great players sons and you move on with your day that, that's that's kind of my take on it and i think everyone should embrace that uh did you have something yeah. to say and i just think that you know there's also there's a big difference between taking a guy who's like man this guy's never gonna play at notre dame or like he's he's not like ronnie paulus you know no, it's not, that was like a totally different like yeah it, that was just so obvious it was like I mean, they even said it was like they wanted him to be a practice player. Like, yeah, that was that that is a waste of a scholarship, right? I just, I'm sorry, you know, but it, it was right. And obviously, you know, he wasn't on scholarship for long, but I'm just saying, like, that's 
that's not a good thing. But like, I think Jerome Bettis Jr. is like a power five prospect. Like he's a guy who can play power five football. He's can he could help out Notre Dame. There's 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 a good chance that he he can be a contributor for Notre Dame. Now I think people want stars and they all want whatever. So I you know if they want to debate that part of it, fine. Uh, but I just think that it's not comparable to like you know to some other circumstances. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he's in the class. We'll see if Notre Dame can add to that with Derek Meadows. Uh, that's something we're going to be monitoring throughout the weekend. Uh, some couple observations from practice, Jamie, is um, – so it, it was interesting. Matt mentioned this in his report that's on irisportsdaily.com. And I'm, I'm watching some of the videos that he posted that's also on our YouTube channel. And 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 they're doing the tackling drill, defense doing the tackling drill. And they had some linebackers go. And then there was a player kind of in the back like keep getting ready to come up. And I said, man, Jalen Sneed, that's a good-looking player. Like he looks – Jalen Snead looks like a dog. Like he looks like a player. And then I'm looking and I'm like, wait, that's number eight. That's not Jalen Snead. And then I said, who's number eight? And I was like, I think that's a Don Schuler. And a Don Schuler looks like a dude. He looks, man, that like he's a first off the bus kind of guy, right? Like he's got the black visor too, and he's got the rolled up, uh, the rolled up jersey up in his pads. Man, he looks like a good player, Jamie. We're monitoring that situation. Add that to the monitoring list. When you come in looking like that, and he's going to get a ton of reps, because Rod Hurd, who was also at practice, uh, he, he can't practice. He was at practice, but he can't participate. because He's not back from uh, Northwestern yet. And, and so he's going to get a ton of reps there. We're going to be monitoring his situation. Uh, he looks good. He looks like a player. Um, and then Mike mentioned... Emil Wagner. Now look, Mike's Mike's a little bit more critical than I think other people, but he's talking about he just looks like a skinny guy. He said he looks like a strong side defensive end. Doesn't look like an offensive tackle, Jamie. You, you hate you, you just hate to see that. Where, where where are you at with those two situations? I mean, I read obviously I read Mike's comments, but then he said he was like he looks like he could gain forty pounds, and I was like, what? Like. No, I I mean I don't know, but that I don't know like, about 40 pounds, but you know what I'm I, saying? Like if he doesn't I look that, like I I mean I obviously saw him in the videos as well, and I was like okay, this is the one thing too, and this is the other kind of like whatever when it always comes with carbody. When I look at at Wagner, I'm like, this guy's working hard in the weight room. He looks like he looks a good. beast, like he looks, he looks good. good. You're right, yeah. He looks good. So I'm not saying he looks like or he's at where he should be, but and definitely like O line, you shouldn't the the you know it shouldn't be the thing of like you're not trying to get an eight pack if you're an O line, right? But it, 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 working hard in the weight room does not seem to be an issue with Emil Wagner. Um, so I and you know and I. I you know, afterwards, you know, Joe Rudolph, they, he, you know, was asked about it. And obviously it's a topic, right? Like it's yeah. something that he's going to talk about. And he basically said that, like, he thinks that he's, they're not as worried about it as, um, you know, I, I, I didn't get the thing where it's like, there's a lot of times too where guys like they just kind of write people off, right? And the thing, and it didn't, mm. I did did not get that vibe, those vibes from him at all. Um, and then also said like, basically like you know he's probably going to be someone when he's 28, he's 315 or whatever. Well, it's like if he's going to be 315 at 28, that means he's still playing ball in the NFL. So it's like you must think that this guy still has a chance of, at being something. So, um, and that I I don't know, I just. I just want to see him play. I mean, play with pads on is yeah. what I want to see before judging anything, you know? And, and that's kind of like the main thing with me. Um, I mean, certainly it's not like great news that Mike's like, Oh, he looks more like a strong side. And, but I mean, there's just different guys. There's some guys that kind of just look like that. And obviously they're, when you look at a guy like guys like Joe Alt and Blake mm -hmm. Fisher, they just look different, you know, yeah. and, um, and, and, you know, uh, 
Jaggy saw too, like same kind of thing, right? Like he, even though he's not quite there yet or whatever, but he also, when you saw it, see where, you know, just his, everything about his body, you're like, yeah, this guy's different, right? Like it's just, there's some guys like that. And Emil Wagner was just like, I mean, he's going to have a different kind of body, but then like Tyron Smith's got a different kind of body than everybody else. Yeah. He does. It's like it just, it all depends. So I, I really just want to see him on the field. I'm excited to see Tosh Baker on the field too. Right. Because yeah. that ultimately is like, yeah, like Tosh Baker's always looked the part. Mm-hmm. So now look, go and play the part. Right. And that's kind of like what it comes down to. Let me, let me ask you something. Cause I think, I think we all kind of talk about it. Like, Oh, if Emil Wagner was three ten, like he's starting right back. Right. I, I think yeah, I don't think I, it's I, like that. I don't think it's that kind of right. Right. So I was going to say, like, it does seem to me and, and and I'm probably guilty of this as well. But it does seem to me that that we're just kind of yada yada the the actual play. Right. And I is it there? Right. Like, it, do we have reason? Is there evidence to suggest that if only he was 20 pounds heavier, it yeah. would be like he's the guy. Like, is there evidence of that? Have you heard that? Have you, I mean, I guess you haven't really seen him because he, I mean, we only have the spring and he hasn't really played that much in the fall. I mean, he played a, you know, a good amount last year, but like none where it was like, we're really going to see what he is against other teams. Number one. Right. Yeah. So is there any evidence to suggest that like, he's close to being the starter? I no, but I, I mean, at the same time too, I, there are things about them when I've seen with his game that, he looks like more of like a guy like that needs to improve in pass pro than the yeah. run game, you know? So I don't think he has a problem moving people in the run game or playing with power there, generating power there, which most people would think when you're thinking of like, well, he's only two, whatever, right? Like instead of being 310 or 320, like most people would think that, but it's a lot of it is like, you know, can you anchor? Can you handle speed around the edge? Like, how are I technically, uh, you know, I, where are you at with your punch and, and controlling things too, right? Like, um, in handling all of these uh, things with it. Well, like, even just saying, like, last year, Billy Shrub looked like a million bucks, couldn't anchor, couldn't anchor well, right? So it's like, mm-hmm. if I see Billy Shrub like get put on skates in this, it's spring ball like frequently I'm going to be like, I don't think then I'm like, I don't know. Billy Shaw took that step. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like that is something that I, to me, that's the number one thing I'm watching with Billy Shaw. I'm not watching to see if he can like move people in the run game, go put on the Louisville tape. He moved people in the run game in that game. When you said, when you're like, you watch that and you'd be like, why isn't this guy playing? And then you see him get bold back into the quarterback. And you're like, that's why he's not playing. Right. Like, so it's, it's all these, and then you didn't, I mean, I'm, you didn't see it when he played later in the year. So that was good. Right. But I'm just, I'm just saying like, that's just the kind of thing that you're looking for. There's just so much more nuance into it rather than like what this guy weighs. It's, it's, it's all about how you play and how you handle all these things. And um, I guess I could kind of just lead into like, I thought what Rudolph was saying about Jagusa was like really, uh, really stood out to me in a really good way just about how serious he took like the opportunity to be like, yeah, I want to like start a left tackle yeah. like right away and how, how much he got after it. Like that is awesome. Like that is just to me, cause there's so much about any, I don't care, whatever. It's not just O line or D line or whatever, any position. So much of it is confidence and be believing like I can do this and whatever. And it's like, some of the stuff you just got to kind of figure out as you go along, but as long as you're like putting in the work, but you're like really getting after, after it and you show you really want it, that mm-hmm. means something. So it's like, if he's doing that, it's not like they're just putting him cause they're like, well, we got nobody else. It's like, no, they're like, Oh, he wants it. And he's got the ability. So let's see it. And you've talked a lot about Notre Dame left tackle, right? That's a big deal. Right? Yeah, so you just kind of say like, Hey, I'm going to be Notre Dame's left tackle like three years running or two years running or whatever it might be like that. That's a big deal. So that goes, shows a good attitude on his part. Um, talking about anchoring with, with Billy Strauss. I want, I want to kind of hone in on this a little bit. Why would someone who is as powerful as him in the running game? I mean, his game is all power. 
why 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 is why is anchoring such a difficult thing like what what's the what's i mean the, i'd what, say what, that needs I, to be, what, what needs to be improved there i guess what's the disconnect i think it's a lot of it is technique right is like because you can be someone who is big and strong but if you can't hold up and you aren't playing properly you don't know how to like reset yourself after because like all the time it happens in uh you know the best offensive linemen that you go against you might get them like rock back but they can reset and they can they are able to reset and then gain their balance back and then mm-hmm. take control i mean that's joe alt there's right. a lot of times joe alt where you look at you're like I mean, of course, there's a lot of times where he's just like locking guys up and it's over, it's over, right? But there's times when you're like, oh, Joe Alt, you're like, he got him. And I would say that's the big different, biggest difference between a guy like Joe Alt and, and Blake Fisher was that like, if you got Blake Fisher, you got him. And that was that. He, You didn't see him able to reset as much and be able to win when he di- didn't have a guy. But like, that's Alt. And that's one of the th- reasons why he's – you know, a top pick, but he's also ability to kind of like get down and play, play low and bend. But it's like, you have to have that balance and the, and be able to be reactive to kind of what you're getting, because there's a lot of times too, some guy might be like a speed rusher. He might be giving a speed rush the whole game that all of a sudden he, he changes speed to power. Well, you got to be yeah. ready for that. Right. And, 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 or you have to anticipate too you know, this is like this kind of thing. I'm going to hard set here. Right. Or I, I I can change up how I'm going to block you on certain things. And that is something that comes with a time and experience a lot of the times too. And, you know, th- which is why so few guys come in and they're like, man, this guy started at guard as a freshman. You just don't mm-hmm. see that very often. Yeah. Like it's just, it's very rare. Right, because of this the strength component. Yeah. Um, would you would you consider the anchoring thing to be a, is it is it a is it a talent issue or no, is there no, like no. it's a coaching thing? I would no, I wouldn't even say it's coaching. It's just like the player being able to apply it, whatever, because it's one of those things that's like, of course, everyone wants to be able to an- everyone like you know, you're like, Oh, I'm getting a bull rush yeah. here, I gotta anchor. But just some guys are good at it or some guys aren't. It's just like some of the some guys can play that technique differently. It's just so different when you're like, it this is what makes it one of the hardest positions ever to play because you just everything you're doing is thinking is like power, attack. And yeah. then it's like, well, now you're absorbing someone's power and be able to kind of like fight that off without like getting too over and like getting off balance and then all of a sudden you get push pulled and whatever right like it's mm-hmm. all of that thing and it so that's why like all that kind of stuff is balanced and you know what some of that some of that is talent because some of it is like i mean some guys just don't have that balance and whatever right and that's one of those things but some of it is just like you have to experience so it's so much to kind of be able to know what it feels like and to be able to combat it and it's also like this is one thing that Robert Hainsey, Robert Hainsey, easily uh, I, out of all those guys on that line that they played at that you know that 2018 to 2020 kind of line that you know with with Eichenberg and Banks and whatever he he is, I mean, he was appreciated, but I don't know if he was truly appreciated because he is just so underrated at being like oh he got beat and then not allowing himself to get beat like that again yeah because he was like oh you got me this time this is well now i know and this is how i'm going to combat it the next time Mm -hmm. right and a lot of that is coaching or whatever but all so he's is being able to uh you know apply it to that thing and being in it and not just being like uh, competitive with it, but just knowing like, okay, well, this is how I was wrong technically here. So this is how I'm going to change it on this next one. Right. And he was just great at that. Yeah. Uh, CFB Hertz says, 
Uh, here we go. I know nothing about O line, but this talk reminds me of wrestling. Strength is important, but you also need technique, or you won't be able to leverage that strength. Um, I mean, that's certainly like. I mean, it's one of the things. I mean, Jagu Saw is a wrestler, right? Mm -hmm. So that's another reason why you know people are pretty confident that he can do it, and why yeah. a lot of people like wrestlers uh, because wrestling. It's not like it's there's so much of it is is reactive right so much of football is reactive in general right so it's like if you can't react um to what someone else is doing and playing o line is a hunt is like a pass protection is reactive mm -hmm. it's so much of it is reactive like yes you know the play so you know what drop like what level the quarterback's going to drop at and all that kind of stuff but you don't know what kind of move the guy's going to put on you. You don't know that they're going to run a stunt or they're going to run some kind of pressure where you're going to have to maybe chip here or there. So there's a lot that you don't know that you have to react to within the play. And some guys are really good at it and some guys aren't. Right. And, um, you know, Notre Dame's had, a, for the most part, their guys have been really, really good at it. Yeah. Um, a couple other things. Uh, Jordan Faison was at practice today, not doing a lot. Um, and Matt mentioned in his write-up that there's a, there's a 20 hour rule also associated with this where it's like, and this applies to Drake Bowen as well, where like if they're doing stuff for the baseball team or they're doing stuff for lacrosse, um, this, that counts. Those hours count against their total for the week. Right. So it, that's something that Faison has to be careful about. That's something that Drake Bowen has to be careful about. You can't just be out can't just you don't get 20 hours per sport right it's 20 hours total for the week uh so Faison was out there just doing a little bit um Jaden Harrison there is it is it possible that of the three transfers he's kind of like the best one is it possible Jamie okay I, I, I'm saying it it might be out there Am I? He's, he's getting rave reviews. He's get he's getting the, the reviews are are very strong on Jaden Harrison, right? It would it's just just it is what it is, man. When the reviews come in, and and this is not from spring ball. This kind of there's some there's been some rumblings going on in the background about how he looked in workouts. Uh, they asked Cam Williams like, who's the fastest on your team? He said Jaden Harrison, which surprised me. Um, Tyler Borgman says we're monitoring. I mean, this is a definite monitoring uh, Jaden Harrison situation. So we, we picked up uh, Don Schuler and Jaden Harrison on this show. Um, and, and that, rem and that reminded me of, of guys who are kind of flying under the radar. They talked to Al Washington today. Didn't really mention uh, Jordan Botelho. I, I feel like Botelho might be, one of the more overlooked players on the roster right now, which is surprising given the fact that he's a senior. <laughs> he's like, he's a returning starter, but people, there's just no excitement about him. And that's just, I, I just find that to be strange. Um, anything on, on like Harrison and or Batelho that kind of pops to your mind when, when I kind of bring those guys up. Harrison, I mean, I, I've, yeah, heard the, obviously the same stuff as you in terms of like his speed and all that kind of stuff, but I'm not going to monitor it till I see it in 11 on 11 mm. stuff. So, yeah, you know, let's wait till we kind of hear some of that because guys can look great in one-on-ones and you're like, wow, this guy looks fantastic. He seems like a guy who would be really good in that setting too. Yeah. Like Faison. Yeah. Um, which I also think too, is that's one of the things that happens with, uh, um, yeah, recruiting is like, because, you know, it's mm. like, Oh, they're doing one-on-ones at camp. And then all of a sudden some it's guys awesome. like, yeah, some guys getting a, a big catch and then he's doing a backflip after and they're like, Whoa, whoa, whoa all right. This guy's like getting wiped <laughs> up. It's like, all right, well, how come yeah. this guy can't catch the ball during the game? Cause he's worried about getting lit up over the middle. Like, you know what I mean? And I, I'm not saying that's going to hundred percent happen to Harrison, but just like, and there are factors, there's reasons to be like, okay, maybe it could happen because, you know, we talked about how he had really poor quarterback play at, at, at uh, Marshall. And, and that was like one of the things. And then when he was at Vandy, it, was, it wasn't like he was, they were getting great quarterback play there either. And, you know, he could be a guy that just 
it, it hits at the right time and he's in the right system and all that. But I just, I got to see it within that part of it first um, before I start getting overly excited. Cause I, I mean, I'm sure he's a guy that looks great. Like when you're just like, yeah, he's an athlete. Well, I mean, he was an all American kick returner. Like I expect him to be a great athlete. Right. Yeah. So that's not the, um, that's not the part that I worry about with him. It's more of like, well, I want to see him make plays within the offense when they're running it against the defense. Right. Mm-hmm. That's what I want to see. Um, and then I think with Botello, um, I think it's, well, part of it is that he didn't have the season that, yeah. you know, people expected and he was obviously beat up and all that kind of stuff. And um, th- so, so that's part of it. But the other part is, and this is everyone's guilty of this in spring is that no one talks about the guys who are coming back that it just like, it's not. Um, so Benjamin Morrison gets talked about in that first day. Cause they're like, yes, obviously. And, and he's just, he is like one of those guys who's like a cut above. He's the only guy who's going to be a first round pick on the team next year most likely most likely maybe somebody else but just as of right now i would say he's the only guy right so and then when he's out there making like you know obj one hand catches whatever like people are like okay yeah he, he stand out and he always just looks good anyways so that's something different but when you're like people aren't going to talk about like riley mills and howard Roth, who obviously didn't even word him pads today but just those guys just don't get – no one asks questions about them because yeah. it's like people kind of already know. So that's why, like, you know, Matt was asking uh, today about uh, Burnham and um, Tui Halamaka, mm-hmm. right, and talking about the Viper position, right? And um, that's like, you know, when he asked about KVA and what that – it's like that's what – people get excited about it, of course, because it's – way more unknown about them Mm. right and i think even with say like xavier watts last year it wasn't like people were like ignoring him or anything like that but there definitely wasn't like people talking in camp or asking in the spring being like do you think he's going to be an all-american like no one was typing it to that point right like no one was no one he, he wasn't the main focus of what people were asking about all the time. And it's like, even it was like, you know, if you look at just safety in general, it wasn't like an exciting position to be like, man, everyone wants to talk to Chris O'Leary to, to hear about the safety. Yeah. And more people want to talk about Antonio Carter. Cause they're like, Oh, Antonio Carter, right? Like what's, what's he going to be? And that's just how it goes. Right. So um, I think there is a little bit of that. Um, but I mean, I, I do think that like with Patello, I'm so interested to see because he's so big. Yeah. He's so big. Like the fact that he was like over 260. And I think he just gotta be twitchy. He's just gotta be really twitchy to be be successful. Mm-hmm. Um and if he's not, then he's I, you know, then I could see him getting beat up at Viper, right? And that's gonna be the thing that I'm gonna watch most. Yeah. Uh, Terry, Ty- Terry Tyler is in the house. Good morning. Good morning to you, Terry. Thanks for uh, being a part of the show. Uh, and if you're part of the show right now, please uh, like this video. Please subscribe. Please hit the notification bell and all those other things. Thank you for being a part of it, everyone. Uh, let's see. Where's this question here? Tyler asked a question about one-on-ones. Uh, there we go. Tyler Borgman says, is it normal to see a guy dominate in one-on-one and then go to get to team and struggle? Uh, it's pretty commonplace. It's pretty common on teams. I had we, when I played uh, in junior college, we had this guy in one on ones. Uh, safeties worked out of the slot all the time, and no one could guard him. He just had we we just had the toughest time, and he wasn't like small guy or whatever. He he was just he was kind of like a like almost like a, a Jeremiah Love type running back. No one could guard him, and we got in the team, and it just wasn't there. And the thing is, is that when you get to team. Like one-on-one lacks all kind of context. There's no context to it. They could run any route. There's no down and distance. There's no personnel. There's nothing. There's no location in the field. And once it, 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 some guys, when you get into team and in games, especially in context is added, 
and the defense can kind of decide like, okay, they're not going to do this. They're not going to do this. You can narrow down what they're probably doing. Then guys struggle. And I've, we saw it a lot. I saw it a lot in junior college. Um, it's just the nature of, you know, one-on-one, -on -one. it's just like a different kind of thing. Uh, so that, that's, that's a very common thing. Uh, let's see, Adam Dowling. He, he wants to, all the receivers is, I believe it when I see it. Um, I don't know. I, th I think there's a, I think there's a good amount of guys who we kind of know about, right? I think we know about Jaden Thomas a good amount. I think we know about Jaden Greathouse a good amount. Uh, the, I, I think the, the transfers are definitely like, okay. Uh, especially Mitchell and, and, uh, Harrison, cause they're coming from a different level. Like Bo Collins, he's, he played at Clemson, right? We kind of know what he can do, right? He put, he played major, major college football. So that's, uh, that's something that uh we can we can uh keep track of anything else that you, you didn't you didn't get to talk um, on power hour anything else that you were kind of thinking about notice that kind of stuck out to you um from spring practice or uh, anything like that no not really obviously this was only like a five period day and it right. seemed like they went more like indie stuff um so and and it was like everyone was kind of there wasn't like a shake up in any of the Mm. Um, kind of, uh, you know, the lineups that they kind of put out there. Right. So, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I think I am, uh, I'm just greatly and kind of anticipating and kind of see where everything goes. And I always think that this is like, so this week, obviously, so, uh, Mike is, is down there with Matt right now. And I'm always interested to see, uh, which is why I kind of like to go in, uh, when I go to the, like the second half of it, because usually there'll be something when I'm there, whether it's and maybe an injury shake something up or uh, whether just like all of a sudden you're like, I mean, this dude's running with the ones. Mm. Like, I didn't, didn't see that. And that happens in the spring. Right. So, um, you know, Adam Daly mentioned, I want to see Bubakar Traer get a real chance to rush the passer. It's like, it's like, I mean, I want to see that too. It's like, you know, they're not even in pads yet. So it's like once they get in pads and you start to see all that kind of stuff. And and I think Bubakar Traer, I want to see him rush the passer, but I want to see him play the run because if he's like not looking good in half line, like then I'm like, okay, then maybe he's only going to be a sub package guy. It's like, it's hard to be a rotation guy if you're not like, doing all that so there's all these other pieces of it that i'm kind of excited to see going forward you want you want you want to have the full package um yeah. and that's that's it's good for a football player good for your website good for your social media page you want to give it the full send you don't want to take any half measures there um and so if you want your media page to look better you want your website to look better your social media page uh your head shop you want that to look better Go to vsrmediacompany.com, founded by another name football pregame host and Emmy Award winning anchor Vahid Sabrazade. VSR Media provides professional and cinematic video and photo. Whether you're looking for a collegiate or pro level highlight reel, have a personal story to tell, or are aiming to diversify and grow your business, VSR Media specializes in short and long form video storytelling, social media management, and website design. VSR Media also captures professional headshots, senior, and sports photos. Contact them at vsrmediacompany.com. Mention Iris Sports Daily to receive 20% off your first project. Visit them online or give them a call at 574-800-9106. Uh, someone running with the ones today, Jamie, Steve Angeli. Uh, you know, it's just kind of an early team period. It's not a big deal, right? They're running scale against uh, – against, uh, scout team offense right so it's not it's they're not even going against like a real defense or anything like that um i think there's been a lot of from me right uh i was on this show i talk a lot about kenny minchie i'm excited about him i think he's a good football player um uh, steve angeli also a good football player right we've never seen him not be a good football player and and i just i just wonder how this is all how this is all going to shake out He's moving well, right? When he he ran the ball, they were, they were doing a little zone read type thing. He fakes the read or he fakes the give and he runs up the thing. And I was like, oh man, like I was like, oh, it's number twelve. It's not number thirteen. Like that's not Riley Leonard, right? Like, or I'm sorry, it's number eighteen. 
not uh, this number 18, not number 12, uh, number 13, Steve Angeli, not Riley Leonard. Like he, he looks good. I just think that's going to be something to, to keep track of, right? Like I just think Notre Dame's quarterback play. And here's the other part. I don't like, I don't think that Notre Dame is an injury away from anything at quarterback. You know what I mean? Like I, and I, honestly, and I also think like Steve Angeli, he's he's hanging out, he's waiting. I I, I think he's going to be on the on the on the on the roster in the fall. I think that's the thing that's going to happen, and then all of those guys are going to battle it out in the in the spring of 2025. You know, in the event that like nothing ever happens to Riley Leonard, which you know, knock on wood for that. I, I think Notre Dame's really set up. In it for in a good situation at quarterback, maybe like the best situation they've been in just from the whole roster. I can't even say when. I mean, it's been such a long time where they had this many quarterbacks. Uh, who you know, if Kenny Minchie came in, like I feel like he could come in and do a good job for a third team quarterback. You know, I, I just feel like they have multiple starters. I think Steve Angeli could absolutely be a starter for this football team, like a high level starter. Obviously, we think a lot of Riley Leonard as well. Uh, so that's something there. And, and you know, there's a lot of schedule talk, Jamie, with, uh, you know, the uh, playoffs and 14 teams and 12 teams. There's a lot going on in the news right now. I just think uh, offensive line, I get it. It's a question. I just think this team, you, you, you can't lose two games this year. You just cannot. It, it, it's And I know look, look, it's, this is way early to have this conversation, but I just, every time I think about it, I just think this is the time. Marcus Freeman's third year, Mike Elko's first year at AM. Obviously, it's a tough game. It's on the road. You got to win this game. I, I, think, I think you just got to. You got to beat Florida State. I know they're good. I get it. Louisville, maybe they're better. You, you got to be beating these teams. I, I just think this team's got to be really good, Jamie. What's your take on that? I mean, I think I think it's one of those things where you look at it against the schedule, and that's the main thing, right? Is that just I think it's that plays a part in it. Because if if I would have said like they were playing uh you know, if they had like two more teams that I thought were like you know, if, if they had Ohio State and Clemson on this year's schedule, I'd be like, well, that would maybe change my thoughts a bit. But they don't have those teams on the schedule. Um, and really, it's like one of these things where, um, I mean, I easily think like, I'm, you know, I, I'm not saying that Texas A&M, that's a game you should check off as a win for Notre Dame. But that's also not a game where, like you said, it's there's reasons to think like, to feel pretty optimistic about them going in there and, and getting a win on the road to, to start the season. So I think with all that, it's just like, there's enough talent. Um, I mean, first of all, you know, the defense, I just, the defense is going to be great. They're going to be great again. They're going to be really, really good. So it's like, because of that, you just know that it's going to come down to like how good they can be on offense and i really just kind of think that they don't even they don't if they're if they become dominant great then i mean they could go undefeated but i don't even think they need to kind of get to that to quite get there because they have enough talent around them to be like still really good mm. so um i think it's and it and with the o line i think a lot of it's going to be like where are they at with the o line halfway through the year and what, how good are they? Because it's it's is it going to be like while wow, they're really like kind of progressing? Because the schedule kind of sets up where it's like, I think if you look at say that 2021 season, well, one of the reasons they were like, I mean, they kind of got through that first half of the season with the O line not being how it was through the skin of their teeth, but still they were able to kind of get through it. And then once it kind of were able to kind of solidify things there, you saw them kind of take off, right? So, um, that's, I guess, what I'm monitoring the most. It's just like what there, there, there is really no reason. There, there's just zero reason why it should be a, a playoff team. It's just really in a in a 12 team playoff. There, there's just zero reason why they should be. The, it's like it would be. 
unacceptable. Like it would it would be really like not okay in my opinion. You just can't. And that with the O line, look, I, I, I get it. They're like new or whatever, but like you. Can't. We said it last year. Like so many teams would be enviable of Notre Dame's position. You know, Charles Jow, you saw top fifty player, right? Uh, Tosh Baker was a four star guy. Uh, uh, Billy Strouth, top one hundred player. Rocco Spiller was a top one hundred player. Like Pat Coogan, three star, got it. Ashton Craig, uh, four star guy, offered by Ohio State, right? Like that is you got it. You got to find a way with that with with those pieces, with those ingredients, right? You just, it, it, it's there. You have to do that. You have the weapons. Like Notre Dame was running some, some stuff with a uh, you know, fake give to Jadarian price. And they got, they got Jeremiah love out in the flat. Yeah. Jeez, I just like, it's like, just nice to see that. Yeah. Good gracious. Like there's just so many ways, like even in the, in the, in the Jaden Harrison piece where, where it's like, look, I don't know how good he is. Right. I, I don't know, but, it's just like he's a guy who can hit the home run. You have Price who can hit the home run. You have Love who can hit the home run. You have Faison who can hit the home run, right? You have Chris Mitchell who supposedly can hit the home run. Suddenly you have all of these guys who are home run hitters who you can have on the field at the same time. It's just like that's the formula to me is being able to just hit explosives, right? Right. And to it just just get points in chunks, get points in easy kind of ways. And that hasn't happened in just a really long time where Notre Dame, especially in the passing game, is uh, explosive all over the place. I mean, when, like, and this is when you talk about Mike Dembrock being able to hunt matchups and get guys in a certain uh, with motion and things of that nature, get guys uh, that ability, you know, to, to the ability to get guys – into favorable matchups and hit explosives that way. I just feel like there, there's there's a ton of opportunity for Notre Dame in that space, and, and they got to take advantage of it. They got to take advantage of that, Jamie. Um, Coach Humph, switching gears a little bit. Hannah Hidalgo, first team All American. I have a question for you about this. Okay. Do you think Hannah Hidalgo might be the like the best freshman in the history of the university? In any sport. In any sport, she might be first team, first team All American, right? Like people, like I talk to, um, like I bring this up to people, and it, they, it, it, like football people, and it's like, you know, it, it, people bring up Rocket. Like Rocket was a kickoff returner guy, right? He wasn't. No, yeah, it, you can't compare him to. What he had a big. Off. He had a big impact, right? Uh, yeah, like Michael Floyd, good, good, like really good, Great like freshman. Mike Mayer, really good. Not first team All American. Yeah, Hannah no, Hidalgo. there's. A, I, I mean, okay, <laughs> football wise, because it's you have to look at it as obviously there was like the pre, like before freshmen were allowed to play, right? Yeah. Uh, Michael Hahn mentioned Ross Browner, like. Obviously, I'm not old enough to have watched Ross Browner when he was a freshman. But by all accounts, the guy was a man as a freshman. Yeah. So to be mentioned in that same, you know, stratosphere as Ross Browner, I mean, it's it says a lot. Might be the best defensive defensive, lineman. she She might be defensive player of the year this year in basketball. Yeah. Led the nation in steals by a wide margin. Okay, and the other the other thing is I don't know if like I don't want to speak because I know we have like a shout out to you know ISD member dog guy, big fencing guy. Like I don't know if there was like some fencing phenom. Well, it's, that, so CFP Hertz is bringing up Mariel Zagunas. Uh, who, who is that? I don't know who that I don't is. know. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. So, I mean. She, help, help, help me out, CFB Hertz. Uh, who, I, what sport does she play? Fencer? Fencer. Exactly. So, that's what, that's whatever. Yeah. See? That's exactly. Tough. That's a dog guy question. Yeah. And, you know, so. Yes. Maybe she's the greatest. Whatever. Out of 
basketball, football, I mean, I don't know if like whatever, like, uh, you know, women's soccer, if they had like a phenom, like, I just don't know enough about it, but she has to be on the Mount Rushmore. Yeah. She has yeah. to be on the Mount Rushmore. Like, so she's in there. So, I mean, it's pretty incredible. Like, cause I would say, um, I mean, obviously Notre Dame has had a lot, a, a lot of great uh, women's basketball players. Yes. And ones who were great as freshmen too. But I don't think they've ever had anyone as good as Hidalgo. I mean, first team um, All-American as freshman. Like, that's incredible. It's incredible. It is pretty incredible. <laughs> she's She's been really good. Um, oh, be, like, just absolutely lived up to the hype and then some. Yeah. I mean, when I talked to Neil Ivy, she was like, yeah, she's like Skyler. And I was like, okay. Like, that's okay. Like, usually usually a coach, you know this, usually a coach will, like, downplay. They downplay it, yeah. They, they won't, you know, like like B, Brian Kelly with Kyle Hamilton. He's like, ah, oh, he's fine, I guess. I don't know. What, what did he do out there? Like, he's pretending like he doesn't know. Brian Kelly wasn't like, oh, yeah, like he's like Bobby Taylor or something. He didn't say that. It, it, and, and and but Neil Ivy was like, no, she's like as good as Skylar Diggins. It's like, okay. And then she was. And probably and better. Like all her numbers are better. So um, I don't know. From a major sports standpoint, it's just hard to imagine someone being as impactful as she has been. So uh, the ladies kick off in the NCAA tournament on Saturday at home at 2.15 Eastern time. Everyone should check that out. Um, check out Dimes with Dara as well. So we're going to be doing some shows covering the NCAA tournament as always. Um, that's been really fun. So check us out there. Uh, Ga, thank you for being in the show. Uh, the Olympic gold medalist, 08. This is um, Mariel Zagunas, uh, Gazier, so classmate of Ga. Uh, maybe, maybe you know, something special about that 08 season, that 08 year. So, uh, yeah. Um, so that I think that's a good place to end it. Uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, please like the show if you like what you heard. Please subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. We'll be back uh, probably, probably – I don't know. What do you think, Jamie? You want to try to go tomorrow? Maybe, we'll, maybe we'll just come back next week. Um, you, you, we, we got you. We got you on. We got you all hopped up on trucks, Jamie. We, we got we, we got so much going on. Uh, big weekend on the twenty third. Uh, big day on the twenty third with the recruits and everything. We'll co we'll cover that next week as well. So plan on the show next week. We'll just do one this week. Uh, so check us out. Enjoy the NCAA tournament uh, starts tomorrow. Enjoy the women that play on Saturday. Hopefully Monday. We'll be back. We'll talk to you soon. Keep hitting and hustling.